Good morning! Isang mapagpalang 2022 po sa ating lahat. Purihin ang Panginoon sa panibagong taon na ito. Ngayon 2022 ay sama-sama pa rin po tayo na magpupuri sa Kanya. Ano man ang mga distraction ay hindi makakahadlang sa pagpupuri natin sa Panginoon dahil ang Diyos na ating pinaglilingkuran ay mas makapangyarihan. Amen? Uh, kung babalikan po natin ang nagdaang taon, ano po ba ang mga pinagdaanan natin? O mga nalagpasan natin? O mga bagay na nagkaroon tayo? Alam naman po natin na ang 2021 ay hindi naging madali para sa atin. Dahil sa pandemic, ngunit tayo ay narito pa rin sa lamat sa habag at biyaya ng Diyos. Ang Diyos ay hindi nang iwan. Asahan po natin na ngayon ay patuloy na pa rin tayong sasamahan. Amen? Tayo po isang daling manalangin. Ami amang Diyos, banal at makapangyari sa lahat. Panginoon, salamat sa nagdaang taon na ito at sa bagong taon na ito. Lord, ano man ang mga kabigatan namin ay sinusuko namin sa inyo. Magsisimula kami ngayong taon na kasama ka. Pour out your spirit, Lord. Excuse me. Ngayong taon ay panibagong pag-asa. Ano man ang hamon ng buhay ay malalagpasan dahil kasama ka namin, Lord. Nawa kami ay maging daluya ng iyong pagpapala at magamit para sa iyong kalunatian. Abutin mo po ang lahat at buksan mo nawa ang puso ng bawat isa sa iyong katotohanan. Ito po ang aming samot na lang sa tanging pangalan po lamang ng iyong anak ni Jesus. Amen. Ang sabi po sa awit 119-105, Salita mo isang tanglaw na sa akin ay patubay. Sa landas kong daraanan, liwanag na tumatang lang. Kaya yung salita ng mga Tunay nga po ang kanyang salita ng mga. Balikan po natin ang kanyang salita. Si Jesus ang salita ng mga. Siya lang po ang ating pag-asa. Bye. 
Good morning once again, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's continue to worship our Lord Almighty. But before we sing our next song, please allow me to read 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. And it says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. God bless the reading of this word. Let us pray. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you are full of hope, full of grace, full of love and understanding. Today we come to your throne to give you praises and thanksgiving for saving us from our sins, for always making a way for us, and for always making a connection to your people. Please hear our voices, O God, as we sing your song. Let every man see your beauty and hear your name. We are so blessed, Jesus, by your presence in our lives. And as we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, please allow us also, Lord, and enable us to tell the nation all the good things you have done. Show and lead us the way to your kingdom and create us a heart with overflowing desire to serve you until eternity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs>
proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Psalm 105 verse 1. Good evening, or I should say good morning. Uh, welcome to Living Spring Community Church. Uh, well, we're still uh, doing our virtual uh, services. We haven't been back to our uh, church building yet, but that doesn't mean that the work of the Lord is going also to be on a lockdown mode or be quarantined. We cannot do that. Anyway, this morning, I would like to uh, give you the message in what uh, we have started as uh, a topic on expansion or expand. Last week, we discussed something about how we can expand our faith. And uh, we looked at uh, the Apostle Paul when he wrote to a church in the Philippians or in, in a church in Philippi and uh, this morning I would like to follow it up with uh, another uh, message in which the letter of the Apostle Paul is again being scrutinized and this would be the basis of our study uh, this morning and by the way, we're still in the new year. I know it's not too late to uh, greet you all with a happy, happy new year. Welcome to 2022. Today, I'd like to discuss a uh, somewhat uh, rather serious issue about what's going on in our world right now. And so I thought of... Uh, giving something relevant for what everyone is going through right now so i'm i'm calling this message we're living dangerously in hard times we're living dangerously in hard times and for all you know you know if we can uh, put up something like on a shirt and i thought of uh Perhaps there's one who wore this kind of shirt wherein it's printed in the shirt, we survived 2021 from COVID-19. And I believe that we can now thank God that we survived indeed COVID-19, especially when it started in two years ago. I remember we were in the Philippines in 2020 when we heard about COVID-19 and we thought that we're not going to uh, make it back here in the States, but God has his purpose and plan set. You know what I learned from uh, the two, past two years that we are in the pandemic, you know, there's this worldwide lockdown. I've never seen anything like this happen in my entire life. I'm, I'm now 64 years old, but this would be the first time that I have heard for a worldwide lockdown. And there were words that we can uh, start to say and read, like the word pandemic. Pandemic. This is, again, the first time that I have encountered this word pandemic. And true enough that this word really holds a very uh, huge issue, especially with what the world is going through with this COVID-19 virus. Another new in the world that uh, all of you can identify. You know, before we always put on our social media status, avoid negative people. That's not hard to identify or not hard to, to grasp, we know that. And we're talking about people who were toxic. Before, we used to say, avoid this kind of people, the negative people. But now, we find new slogans saying, this time, avoid positive people. Now, we're not talking about people who are so positive 
or who has a, a positive outlook in life. We know that this is this has become a technical term referring to people who has COVID-19 in their system, meaning to say they tested positive. So for the past two years, 20 and 21, we've been hearing this kind of slogan. And coming to 2022, I have encountered another slogan uh, on social media that says, this year, avoid people. Wow. I hope that that's not quite serious in terms of its approach and in terms of what people meant when we say avoid people. Perhaps it's just simply to rouse our attention to avoid crowd right now, avoid crowded places. Now that we know that uh, this, virus, this virus comes in different variants and we cannot just, uh, you know, uh, do something without being afraid right now. And so uh, this morning, I'd like us to turn our scripture to this uh, passage. And if you can, <clears throat> oh, by the way, uh, not only that there was this pandemic, you know, last uh, December 2021, 20, before Christmas, we are all bombarded with the news about a super typhoon. They call it uh, Typhoon Rai internationally, but when it landed in the southern part of the Philippines, we call it Typhoon Odette. And I'd like to show you some pictures about uh, how devastating this typhoon was. And so, indeed, these are segments wherein you and I can say, Indeed, we are all living in dangerous, uh, hard times. Time is so hard, not counting that uh, COVID-19 is in our midst, and its effect is that uh, a lot of jobs have been lost. A lot of people are now jobless. Economy is not so good, and people are really perplexed on what's going on. Hardly anyone is not afraid. And yet, this is the kind of message that the world needs to hear. We are certain that God is in the midst of this pandemic, even though we are on the second year. But the biggest question that I like to raise with you right now is, if this is the case, if this is what we are uh, facing right now in, in these difficult, uh, hard times, what are we to do? What and how should we live in times like this? And so this is where the Word of God will factor in our study this morning. And if you can uh, join me in turning to the New Testament in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we will be reading verses 11 to 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 11 to 13 and let me read it and please follow as i read uh, this text and i'm using my whole mind christian standard uh, version verse 11 therefore because we know the fear of the lord we seek to persuade people we are completely open before god and i hope we are completely open to your consciences as well verse 12 we are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to be proud of us so that you may have a reply for those who take pride in the outward appearance rather than in the heart. And lastly, in verse 12, 13, for if we are out of our mind, it is for God. If we have a sound mind, it is for you. May God bless the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, or this morning, I should say, uh, asking for your blessing as we study your word. We believe, Lord, that the word of God is powerful and it holds true. And this is very 
uh, important, especially as we follow its principles in, in our midst. We are living in dangerously hard times. We know that. The whole world knows that. But again, uh, the challenge is how are we going to show? How are we going to live uh, a life worthy as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ? And I believe the letter of Paul to his like second letter to uh, the Corinthians, the passage that we have read would give us a clear-cut idea and truth how to battle off the challenges that facing that is uh, that we're facing here on planet Earth. And so be with us. Let your word continue to be an outstanding beacon in this dark world. Let your word give us understanding. Let your word resonate in its truth and confront what a lot of people are so afraid about. And we ask, Father, that you will be with us. In Jesus' name I ask this. Amen. There are three things that I would like to share with you this morning uh, in reference to what we have read earlier. And uh, I believe Paul meant it when he said it. And so there are three things, one of which is we are asked in the text that you and I, we need to live urgently. You and I, we need to live urgently in a time such as this. Let me go back to our scripture passage earlier in verse 11. Paul said here, Therefore, because we know the fear of the Lord, we seek to persuade people. You know, the fear of the Lord here, I believe, is in reference to what he said in verse 10. In verse 10, Paul referred to that as you and I are going to face the judgment. But the judgment here is the judgment for the believers, not for the unbelievers. And the judgment that says here is not that you and I will be punished or you and I will be sent forth to a place of eternal damnation. No, don't get me wrong. That passage is referring to as the church will go through this motion wherein you and I will be facing the Lord and that uh, in that judgment seat we were told that some of the things you and I did will be will eventually be bur be burnt meaning to say there are things that doesn't really matter when you do it for God what is left is whatever whatever things that you did for the lord those are the only matters that will last forever so uh, there are a lot of good things but there are a lot better things that you and i need to do and so for instance if you if your life is all material material gain or wealth i believe that it will not matter so much in the end because all of them will vanish in thin air and so i believe if your life purpose is to serve god whatever you did for the lord in this life in planet earth i believe those are the things that will last forever and they will not be burned and so i believe in verse 11 the fear of the lord the the praise fear of the Lord here is in reference to that uh, moment. And therefore, you and I, we need to fear the Lord. And especially when, whenever we do things our way, let's always think twice or thrice if what we're doing is something that will benefit and that will glorify God. Otherwise, on the judgment seat, these things will just burnt up and so as we continue uh, living urgently Paul said we seek to persuade people 
What does he mean when he said, we seek to persuade people? You know? Uh, the word persuasion is something that uh, that caters to people we're in. We want them to understand why we live such as this or why we behave such as this and having a deep con conviction about the gospel that Jesus Christ needed to be uh, received and accepted in our lives. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story how this thing will factor. <clears throat> I don't know if you uh, know this guy. His name is Madison Cawthorn. He is the newly elected congressman of the 11th district of North Carolina. You know, he made headlines uh, earlier or in, uh, in, in a couple of uh, past months. He made a headline. You know what? Because of his statement. And in his statements, in his statement, he said, because uh, Madison or Congressman Madison Cawthorn uh, mentioned that he is a, uh, a Christian. And uh, he would like to persuade the Jews and the Muslim to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's serious when he said that. And so a lot of, uh, you know, people netizens from the news media they all frowned on that uh, statement that he made earlier and so they raised their questions and the voices that they raised said what what does he think he is billy graham and this is how he responded to his uh bashers if that is the correct word in our time today this is what he said to them, and listen very carefully, because he said it all. He said, if all your friends are Christians, then how are you going to lead somebody to Christ? If you're not wanting to lead somebody to Christ, then you're probably not really a Christian. That is a mouthful. Let me repeat it again. This is Congressman uh, Cawthorn. 11th district of North Carolina and how he is so persuasive in his words. If all your friends are Christians, then how are you going to lead somebody to Christ? If you're not wanting to lead somebody to Christ, then you're probably not really a Christian. Church, I'd like to use that also to make our persuasion be a big thing in our lives. That's the reason why Paul, Paul may sounded like he's arrogant and, and, and he's bragging, but actually the bottom line of that is that he is identified with Christ. That's the bottom line. He said, imitate me and follow, uh, follow me in some of his uh, letters. And he was saying that when he met Jesus Christ, his life is altered completely. And now he leads the pack of people and the people in every churches that he meet to be one in Christ. He is a man of persuasion. And I'm, I pray that you and I, we will be on the same level of our persuasion to persuade people with our understanding of the truth. Let's give it to them. Let's not be afraid. Secondly, it's not just that the call is for us to live urgently. This time around, the call is for you and me to live transparently. Transparently. Are you an open book yourself? Listen to Paul once again from verses 11 to 12. He mentioned this, we are completely open before God. 
And I hope we are completely open to your consciences as well. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to be proud so that you may have a reply for those who take pride in the outward appearance rather than in the heart. The call is for you to be urgent, live urgently, persuading people that they need to know Christ personally as their Lord and Savior. But how can they do this, do this if they don't see us living as well in conjunction to what we uh, also say? And so this call is a very important call for the church. Let our life be a transparent thing clear before God and people that we're not hiding anything you know I believe that there are Christian leaders who fell from grace in which their lives were not really very nice especially when they committed a bigger blunder and it's it's full-blown in the media but don't get me wrong it doesn't mean that they fell that all uh, Christian leaders are like that. No. And that's why Paul here is admonishing. It's, it's telling. He's telling the truth to this church in, the, in Corinth. That according to him and his uh, colleagues who were with him in that, in that journey, that they are completely open to God. And he is admonishing them to be also completely open to their consciences as well because this is what the world needs a life that hides nothing a life that is seen in the dark is the same life that is seen in light the call is for you and me to live transparently i do remember in one of my readings in the past here is ruth graham you know uh, the wife of uh, the very Billy Graham. And she was once asked to define, according to her, what is a saint? What is a saint? And you know, she answered simply in this manner. A saint is someone who makes it easy to believe in Jesus. A saint is someone who makes it easy to believe in Jesus. You know? Meaning to say, in what she said, in what she described to be, there is that aspect of real persuasion, that the person is indeed persuaded without a doubt that Jesus Christ is who he claimed to be, that he is the Son of Man, that he is the Son of God, that he is our Lord and our Savior. So... Are you in this category that Ruth Graham is describing? Someone who makes it easy to believe in Jesus. That's according to Ruth Graham. And thirdly, and lastly, the call is also for you not to live just urgently and not to be, you know, not to live just transparently. But the call is for you and I to live boldly. Live boldly. Again, let's go back to our text. Here is Paul in verse 13. He said, For if we are out of our mind, it is for God. If we have a sound mind, it is for you. That is in verse 13. What Paul is saying here actually is that, For him, it's okay to be called insane or crazy. For him, it's okay if people will identify him as crazy, as long as he's crazy for the Lord Jesus Christ. I do remember in one account in the book of Acts, starting in, ch in chapter 25, you know, in this chapter, it's a record in which the reaction of a man named Festus. Festus is a Roman governor 
of Judea. And when Paul was on trial for his life, Festus heard Paul's story. And as he heard his story, he was perplexed. He was confused in a way. Why? Because it involved matters of the Jewish law and Paul's testimony about a dead man named Jesus who Paul claimed was alive. That is in verse 19 of Acts 25. You know, the very next day, Paul gave his public testimony before King Agrippa. He asked a question that hangs in the air, you know, 2,000 years later. And the question is, why should any of you consider it incredible that God raises the dead? That's his, uh, that's his challenge to them. That's his very question. And after listening to Paul, you know, in his testimony, Festus, the governor, interrupted him by saying, your great learning is driving you insane. That's what, what he called Paul. He's insane. He's crazy. He's nuts. He's mad. You know, he was, you know, there is something wrong in the head. And you know what? In a time such as ours, especially living in this uh, cancel culture, when people heard you mutter some things, especially that they do not like and it doesn't seem to fit their own view, they're going to cancel you. They're going to block you off. And I'm just wondering how many Christians have received such kind of treatment, you know, in the known world back then and even in our time. When you claim that Christ rose from the dead, people will not affirm you. Instead, they're going to ridicule you and chances are they are going to laugh at you. And that's why the call for Christians today, knowing that we are living dangerously in hard times, is for us to live boldly, without fear. Someone said, conquer fear, therefore you conquer all. And right now, this is a call for you and me to live boldly. Let me share further with you some of the stories that I have harnessed when studying this uh, lesson. You know Jim Elliot. Jim Elliot is once a missionary to uh, Southern America, in which we know he paid it with his dear life, that he was killed by the same tribe or people that he was trying to reach for Christ. You know, at that time, before that fateful day, he made a prayer. And the prayer is this, Lord, make me a crisis man. You know, have you heard of anyone who prayed that way? Who prayed to become a crisis man? A man who will always find crisis simply because he is a Christian? And then he went on to, to pray. And listen to this. Make me a fork that men must turn one way or another on facing Christ in me. Make me a fork that men must turn one way or another on facing Christ in me. I agree with him. And I believe Paul will also agree with Jim Elliot in his statement. Because that's the point. When we persuade men some of them will turn on the right or some of them will turn on the left. But just the same, let's become a crisis man. Who knows? The next person that you're going to meet with is going to find a fork. But on that fork, instead, he will go away wherein it would lead to facing Christ. In return 
And also, another thing that I read uh, this week while studying, you know, I never thought that Alice Cooper came to know Jesus Christ. You know, when I was an unbeliever and growing up in my teens, the name Alice Cooper is so huge in my culture. I didn't realize that he is also huge all over the world because of his style, his genius, his writing uh, genius. You know, I follow him. Later on, he became a believer. And he made statement. And as a believer, he made this thing. And I believe he's making a huge statement by saying these uh, lines. He said, drinking beer is easy. Thrashing your hotel room is easy. But being a Christian, oh, that's a tough call. That's rebellion. You know what he's saying along that line? To fall into sin is as easy as drinking beer. And it's easy as thrashing your hotel room. But when you live a life that is so persuasive because you're persuading people to live for Christ and that you're living a transparent life of a believer in Christ, of someone genuinely uh, transformed by the Lord, and someone who is bold, he never is ashamed to preach the gospel. He is never uh, unapologetic in his persuasion. According to Alice Cooper, that's a tough call. And for him, that's a form of rebellion. Church, I know the bigger word today is the word fear. Fear to go out fear to be with people, fear to face a group or something else. But in a time such as this, you know, our call is quite different. Our call is to go the opposite direction. And I believe that's the reason why Alice Cooper used the word rebellion, because in a way, when you live for Christ, you are rebelling from the status quo. You are not, you are not famous. You're not going to be uh, a celebrity. But instead, most of the time, Christians, this caliber, they were mocked. They were laughed at. And so, this morning before we close, can I challenge you? Can I challenge that your life will be seen with urgency that whatever happens anytime is that you and I can be called back to God in his kingdom. But in the meantime, that that is on hold, the call is for you and me to live urgently. Let's persuade men, women, children, young and old people alike for the same reason that Paul said. And let's be so transparent in our dealing with them, hiding nothing, that we will have no agenda at all, whether it's a political agenda or a financial agenda. Let's drop it off. Our agenda is one thing, to bring the gospel across to someone who will respond to it. And lastly, this is the year that we need to be bold. Living dangerously calls for living boldly. As a matter of fact, last year I started using the word bold. Be bold. Not knowing I can continue using the word in our time, even in the new year. Why? Because God calls us to expansion. Last week, it's an expansion of your faith and mind. This time around, it's an expansion to make room for the gospel. How can we make room for the gospel? If not for being or living urgently, living transparently, and living boldly. I'm going to lead 
a prayer now, especially a prayer of acceptance. And if you're right now listening, if you're right now glued to this video, and you know in your heart that if you die today, you're not sure where to go. Can I ask you and invite you to receive Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior? Because He is the only person who has promised and told you that He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father. Is referring to God. No one can go to God except through Him. So He is the way to God. You want to get to heaven someday? Turn to Jesus. But perhaps you are a believer, but you are living a reluctant Christian lifestyle. There is hardly an urgency in your life. It's as if that you don't care what's going on in the world. God wants you to be part of His coming kingdom and to be part of His great army that will eventually welcome for His coming. Can I challenge you as well this morning to live a life with urgency, transparently, and boldly for Christ. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come to you this morning. We thank you for how Paul had presented his cause to a church in Corinth. And now he presented it to us in the same manner when Paul uh, wrote this. He also was living in a dangerously hard times. He is actually in the prison. He is actually uh, being held off. And yet, Lord, it was not difficult for him to respond to the times. Instead, he wrote encouraging letters, encouraging the churches all over the known word, world how to respond. And today, I believe, Lord, some people who are listening to this broadcast are ready to respond. First off, to those who are ready to respond to the invitation that you are extending for them to invite you in their hearts to be their Lord and Savior. I pray, Father, whoever is struggling right now in their seats, I pray that you release them. Remove any struggles that they might be facing, Father. And I pray, I pray, Lord, that uh, uh, you would come to them strongly, and boldly, and lovingly in their hearts. Second, I also challenge my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Perhaps they're Christians. They know that they're going to heaven. But their lives right now are quite questionable. And just like what uh, Representative Madison Cawthorn said, that as Christians, we need to be identified with Christ. We need to be reaching out with people. And if that is not our agenda, perhaps something is wrong. And today, would you please correct the wrong? right the wrong holy jesus and i pray that they too would join the throngs of god's army in welcoming and celebrating for your coming but in the meantime use us let our urgent call to be out let our call to be transparent to be out there hiding nothing that what all they can see in us is our bold proclamation of the Lord Jesus Christ. That no matter how people will brand us with some names, it doesn't matter. For we are like the apostle. We are identified with a man. And that man is none other than 
the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it be. I pray for those who have received these prayers in their hearts that they too will become a man of urgency, a man and a woman of transparency, a man and a woman who is ready for a call to be bold. I pray this with thanksgiving, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Well, let me bring you to some two announcements that's coming up in our community. Tomorrow is December uh, the 10th. December the 10th is the start of our 21 days of prayer and fasting at Living Spring Community Church. And I want to challenge you as well to take this uh, discipline seriously. And I believe that prayer coupled with fasting is a powerful discipline that we all needed so that we can stay on focus living in these dangerously hard times. You know, there was a portion in the scripture wherein someone is being possessed by demons. And for some reason, the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ could not cast out the demon. And so he spoke to the father of the demon possessed. And it's as if he's telling Jesus, your man couldn't help my son. And so Jesus called uh, the demon possessed and he rebuked it. Later on, he was confronted by his disciples asking, why is it that they couldn't uh, extract the demon from that demon possessed? And this is what Jesus told them. This kind of situation, it will not go without prayer coupled with fasting. Prayer coupled with fasting. From that statement of the Lord, I believe that prayer with fasting, it can break the chains, whatever kind of chains that the enemy is putting on you and me. It can break it. It can shatter it. And so I'm calling for the whole community of the believers who are willing to go through this track of 21 days prayer and fast. We will be posting on social media, on Facebook, on LSCC News Feed, on LSCC Facebook page about um, updates on this event. Take note, it starts tomorrow and we will end the fast on Sunday, January the 30th. We are going to planning to break the fast in our church building. May God bless us with that. And last but not the least. Second announcement is that this coming Friday, this week, Friday, which is January the 14th, 2022, there would be a virtual prayer meeting. A virtual prayer meeting. And we will start at 8 p.m. Also, we will be posting the Zoom link in my Facebook account and in our LSCC Facebook page. And our featured devotional speaker that night is none other than one of our praise and worship ministers, a lady whose name is Sister Fe Kim. Sister Fe Kim. She will lead in our very first devotions in our community of prayers this year, 2022. And so we're inviting everyone, please join us. Again, this is uh, Ernie Bartholome uh, signing off, coming from Bowie, Maryland. God bless you all. I'll see you next week.